Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at the murder of missionary Jacqueline Hamill, but how did this 36 year old missionary from Tasmania, Australia end up dead in a Filipino jail? Jacqueline Hamill, a twin, was born in 1953 in Strahan, Tasmania, on the west coast of the island, a small town which as of 2016 has a population of just 658 people. She was the daughter of Ray and Jean Hamill and was one of ten kids. Moving to Sydney in New South Wales, Australia's biggest city in 1985 to attend Bible College, she became active in the then Christian cities Jirawin Pentecostalist Church. She was described by her parents as a Christian who wanted to help the small people. Her sister Denise Hamill stated that her sister had vowed to become a missionary since she was a child, stating the church was her whole life. She dreamed of teaching the gospel as long as I can remember. During this time she was invited by a friend to visit a prisoner at Parramatta Jail and she realised that her calling in life was to spread God's love in prisons. Christian City is now C3 Church Global. The church began in DY in Sydney in Easter 1980 and was founded by New Zealanders Philip and Christine Pringle. The C3 Church has been heavily criticised, including grooming church congregations to pay for legal fees for one of Phil Pringle's friends, convicted of using the funds of another church to fund his wife's music career, and during the 1980s, church elders were accused of failing to act on several cases of sexual abuse and molestation station of young boys. Moreover, the C3 Church has strongly come out against gay marriage within Australia and will not allow sexually active gay members to participate in the church. In 2019, the Channel 9 tabloid show A Current Affair did a piece on the church criticising it, including the fact that the church had requested large donations from members of its congregation in return for so-called miracles. Christian City's church had done numerous missionary trips to the Philippines since 1986. However, Hamill elected to go independently without financial support as part of a joyful assembly of God members and was invited to teach prisoners at the Davao Metrodiscum, now the Davao Police Hostage, for a combined six months. The prison held 1,000 prisoners. Her parents back in Tasmania tried to discourage her from going, but the strong-headed Hamill insisted that she had a calling from God to go. On the 15th of July 1989, Hamill boarded a flight from Sydney to Manila, the capital of the Philippines, and then caught a connecting flight to Davao, never to return alive again. Her sister Avalon saw her off at the airport. While in the prison, as part of a joyful assembly of God members, she taught and played music, and also tried to teach prisoners about religion. Allegedly, she had a hoot there, with Avalon noting regarding her sister, she just loved the Filipino people. To give a bit of background, on the 2nd of April 1989, Felipe Pogoyo and his prison gang called the Wild Boys of Depecol staged a takeover at the Davao Penal Colony, seeing 15 individuals taken hostage by 15 prisoners, with the group using knives to overcome prison guards and escaping with a jeepney, with the prisoners demanding a plane to Manila and to engage in dialogue with the then president, Corazon, Corazon Aquino, to be transferred to the National Penitentiary in Muntinulpa due to the abuse by Davao Penal Colony prison officials. On the night of the 3rd of April, 13 hostage takers released for hostages and surrendered, while Pugullo and Ricardo Navarro held two teenage girls hostage. Pugullo's final demand was to see his mother, which the military agreed to. Most of the convicts were transferred to Davao Metodisco, where Hamill would later be posted with a promise of a transition to the National Penitentiary in Multinulpa, not coming to fruition. It was here that the abuse against prisoners escalated, with a future negotiator during the August 1989 prison riot, Silvestre Bello, who was Justice Undersecretary, stating that the hostage takers were abused in prison with three having their ears chopped off. On the 13th of August 1989, the Joyful Assembly of God conducted a prayer service and Bible classes before Pugullo and Hamad Nazir Samprani, a former sergeant from the Philippine Air Force who took part in a 1976 hostage crisis, orchestrating the taking of 17 members of the Joyful Members of God hostage, including Hamil. 
Hostage takers didn't want to release Hamil and saw her as their trump card because she was Australian, according to the newspaper The Manila Standard. At 4.30pm, hostage takers began talks with Congressman Ramon Meta and Senator Nina Rasul, demanding that they be transferred. A deadline was set on the 14th of August at 3pm with hostage takers extending their deadline and not hurting the hostages but demanded a bus for them to leave the prison. At 9.30pm on the 14th of August, Pastor Jamul Dukun, who managed to escape, claimed that the 9 of the 15 hostages who were women had been raped, including Hamil who was raped at knife point, with prisoners refusing to eat their food or return to their cell. On the 15th of August at 10.35am, the prisoners attempted to leave the prison using hostages as human shields with gunshots fired by the prisoners. It was around this time that Hamil was wounded along with Bogoy. Prisoners were then promised a transfer to a prison in Manila. Inmates and hostages crossed a chain-link fence with hostages able to escape as gunshots were fired and the rest of the hostages dragged back into the prison. At 3pm on the 15th of August, soldiers stormed the prison after firing tear gas when hostages refused to cooperate, followed by shots with reporters describing the magnitude of the firing as like rain and unable to determine if prisoners were firing back. A combined five hostages including Hamil had been killed and 16 hostage takers were shot by the military. The youngest person to be taken by the hostages and killed was a nine-year-old boy. A medical examination of Hamil's body by the Davao Doctors Hospital found that she had been killed by a gunshot wound from the back of the left of the chest region which exited the collarbone and was not caused by a military sniper. It was reported by survivors that she had been wounded as early as 10.30am on the 15th of August following a gunfight between prisoners and the military outside the prison. At 3.15pm she was found wounded by Major Nonito Serrano at the side of a building and was brought into the adjoining administration building before being taken to the Davao Doctors Hospital through a Red Cross ambulance where she was pronounced dead upon arrival. Her sister Denise insisted that right to the last she was always trusting in God, stating that the Hamill family had received a report from witnesses vowing that she was singing and praying when she died. President Corazon Aquino expressed sadness and absolved the military personnel of any guilt for the shooting. This was backed up by Bello, who insisted that the prisoners would not be taken alive. The then mayor of Davao, Rodrigo Duterte, who we will come back to in a minute, also defended the military intervention, noting that it was the only civilized option at the time. However, this was not felt by the Hamil family, who criticized the Philippine military's decision to storm the prison. Moreover, then Foreign Minister Gareth Evans insisted that the Philippine military couldn't be blamed for the incident, telling reporters, I don't think it's something for which anyone can be placing any blame, express or implied, on the Philippine government. Despite Evans telling the Associated Press on the 16th of August 1989 that Hamill may have been shot by a soldier during an attempted escape, with Evans urging Filipino authorities to investigate to determine the source of Hamill's fatal wounds, with the responsible charged and the Australian Embassy in Manila was directed by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade to submit a complete report on the incident. However, the Hamill family criticised the then Australian Prime Minister Bob Hawke, as well as Gareth Evans, with Gene Hamill telling the Hobart Mercury, Tasmania's largest newspaper, that the pair were too concerned about their budget to care about my daughter, and now it's too late. Ray Hamill also told the Hobart Mercury, why the hell did they have to storm the prison? She gave her life to helping other people, and now she has paid for it with her life. In 2016, Rodrigo Duterte was running for president of the Philippines. At one of his campaigns in Quezon City on the 12th of April 2016, Duterte joked to the crowd regarding Hamill and her rape. They raped all of the women. There was this Australian lay minister. When they took them out, I saw her face and I thought, son of a bitch, what a pity. They raped her. They all lined up. I was mad she was raped because she was so beautiful. I thought the mayor should have been first. He also claimed to have ordered the storming of the Davao Metro Discom in a desperate attempt to rewrite history. This caused significant outrage from human rights and women's groups, including then President Benigno Aquino. Senator Grace Poe described his joke as distasteful and unacceptable and reflects his disrespect for women. Even Chelsea Clinton posted on Twitter, not funny. 
Hamill's friend and fellow Australian missionary who was in Manila at the time, Robin Haynes Merrill, stated on Facebook, On behalf of my sister in Christ, Jacqueline Hamill, I publicly denounce the presidential candidate of Duterte in the Philippines. Moreover, the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade noted in a statement, We note that there has been widespread condemnation of the comments in the Philippines. Australia strongly condemns such comments that make light of rape, which is a violent crime. Rape or any form of sexual abuse should not be trivialized. However, Duterte apologized, well, sort of, on the 17th of April 2016, telling reporters that he would not say sorry as, quote, I said it in the heat of anger. I'm sorry in general. I'm sorry to the Filipino people. It's my style, it's my mouth. I said it in anger. It was not a joke. I said it in a narrative. I wasn't smiling. Ironically, after his comments about Hamill's rape and death, Duterte went ahead in the polls with a social weather stations poll conducted between the 18th and 20th of April 2016, showing Duterte having an increased voter preference of 33%, up from 27%. Either way, it didn't really affect Duterte's election hopes, with Duterte winning 39.01%, or 16,601,997 votes under the PDP Lablan, becoming the 16th president of the Philippines with the most votes. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment? It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day and remember that truth is always more interesting than fuction.